Before we go, I wanted to also do a little summary of what we did with the camps and stuff. Obviously, in this campaign, we migrated. So, Greece starts off, you know, all the way up here in Nikathay normally. Greece starts off around here normally, the Great Hall of Greece. But we migrated all the way down over to here to Scrag starting position using the rifts um, on the, around turn 30. And then we immediately took out Altdorf built a camp right next to Altdorf. So that means that this camp can have a garrison in it that's really cheap because oh, the, the camps sorry. have um, minus 60% upkeep here, then another minus 20% upkeep from this building, the Noblar's box. So you can put like a, a quite a decent stack of troops in there. And then if there's any, ever a rebellion from Altdorf, then you can immediately take it out. Or if invaders come from the north, you know, you've got this um, cheap army here. And, I've, and, and then I've got these... Um, what do you call it? Got these three lords, right? These three extra lords that hang around, and they just sit around raiding. And each, and when you're raiding, it gives plus ten growth, plus ten camp growth to local camps. So, um, so this camp here is getting seventy-five growth per turn. It's also getting twenty growth per turn for being in enemy territory, um, and uh, so it's growing, growing quite fast, right? So basically, originally I put down the Altdorf camp, had three of those guys raiding there. Then I put another camp in Eilhart. So you can't put more than one camp in one region. So Altdorf, there's only one Altdorf camp, right? So then you have to put it in another region, but you also can't put it very too close together, right? So that's these two here are about as close together as you can get. Um, if I put it any closer, when you try to put the camp down, it would be, um, this would be great out because it say it's too, too close to another camp, right? So you just put it just far enough to be away from that one and just over the border in Eilhart. And then, um, and then I put another one over here, Uber's right camp. That's the the border to Uber's right is just there, so it's just over the border. Um, and the advantage to that is that we've got Uber's right here, which forms like a shield. So if if we were to get to attack from the east here, they would take Uber's right first. So I'd have like an extra turns warning, you know, even if I didn't see them coming. Like the first thing I see is them taking Uber's right. I've still got a turn before they get the camp, right? The camps are where the the real value is. The camps are what you don't want to lose. Uber's right. I'm gonna is is uh, tier two. I'm gonna put it up to tier three now. But I left it. I left it at tier two and didn't invest any more money into it because I, I intended for it to be, you know, losable. Like I intended to be happy to lose it if I had to, you know, as a defensive measure. But I didn't want to lose Uber's right camp. And that's, yeah, that's why I kept that there. Um, now the other thing is, and oh yeah, and then later on I put the Cruden Wild camp down as well. And and as I'm leveling them up, I'm using these uh, Ogre Lords with their raiding stance to give plus 10 growth for each Lord in that's in that um, in that region. So if the Lord's anywhere in Altdorf and they're raiding, then the Altdorf camp will get plus 10 growth, right? But the other thing is, as these Lords level up, you level them up and you put their skill points into um, growth, province growth, right? So this guy's given plus 36 province growth. I'm not using it at the moment. But when they were sitting in here, they're like raiding, right? So they're, they're raiding Altdorf, which is causing Altdorf to have negative public order. So I made a couple of rebellions spawn. Um, but at the same time, it's buffing Altdorf's growth. Like if these guys are maxed out three times 36 growth, that's like 105 growth or something for the province. And you've only got to get them up to tier three because tier three is the max settlement size for ogres. So, you know, you have these three guys with 36 growth plus each. So they're pumping the growth in the province. At the same time, they're slightly reducing the growth because they're, they're um, raiding it. Um, but the raiding is increasing the camp growth. And then they're also causing rebellions from the raiding. But the camp has a really cheap army sitting in it right well this it's actually sitting in here right now so this this camp's got um this really ch this whole stack but it's only costing 800 gold right so then if there's a rebellion these guys that are standing around uh, raiding they can just grab the army out of here go take out the rebellion and then they usually got enough money to get the army back into the camp before the end of the turn so you don't have to pay the full price right so, so you got a cheap garrison. Um, it's a better garrison probably than the one that's in Altdorf, and it costs and, it, and it's quite cheap. Although Alt Altdorf obviously it's their garrisons are free, but yeah, you don't get to choose what units are in them. Um, anyway, so you're pumping the growth. You only care about getting the growth to tier three really. So this one sits tier three. Tier three gives you uh, plus one hunter capacity. The hunters are the most spammable heroes for the ogres, so you want to get that. Plus tier three gives you butcher capacity, which is your spellcasters. You want to probably have one at least one in each army. Um, uh, and um, and tier three gives you the tier three money building, gives you 600 gold per turn. And all these money buildings are fairly cheap to build. They're only like, you know, um, I think 1500 is the most expensive one. And it's giving you, and it gives you 200 extra each turn. So you always want to build these money buildings. Um, 
I, I've got the other camp, the, I've got the other camp growth one that sort of goes about camp and camp building and stuff like that. But basically, you just want to pump these camps up tier three really fast. Just move your three um, ogres that are pumping growth around to each one as you, as you as you do to maximize your growth. At the same time, you're causing rebellions with your raiding. You got the army there to kill the rebellions, gets experience, level these guys up, give them more uh, <laughs> growth, and etc. etc. Um, and um, oh, and the other thing about it too is by putting you put in these camps as close together as possible so that you can force march so just say like just say this one got attacked right i've got um the army sitting in here that's really cheap right but i've also got this lord next door here that can grab this army out of there whenever it's needed and then you know if Yeah, and then if this is getting attacked, he can just like cruise over there and drop the army into here. Like if there was an army threatening, maybe he was going to attack or whatever, he can move that army from there over to here. So basically, whichever side I think is the most threatening, that's the camp that I'll put the I'll put the army in. But I'll have these lords nearby ready to transport, ready to transport the army anywhere that you want. So you could put a garrison in all four of these camps, or I've just got one garrison and I just move it. I move the garrison to whichever side is the most threatened. So at first, so this side was always pretty safe, but when I first built it, I had a half garrison in Altdorf. Then when I got this one going, you know, and I wasn't sure what was going on there, I can move some garrison over there. But then once I had a hero here that could scout, I'm like, okay, this area is safe. So then I put another camp down here, then I moved the garrison back up into this camp. And yeah, anyway, I just, yeah, I just wanted to kind of make a quick little thing about that, that, that like philosophy of building up Altdorf. Um, oh yeah, you're building up Altdorf, you're putting um, this tier three building that builds hunter capacity in um, each of your, in every single settlement. So you can get heaps of hunters. Hunters are really powerful. Um, hunters are really powerful heroes when you put them on stone horns. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know, that was, that was all I really wanted. That was kind of like the theme of today's episode. I just wanted to talk about this little camp setup that I had going on here that I, I kind of planned it out and yeah, I think it was quite effective. Um, meanwhile, you're like managing your allies and conquering territory. Oh yeah, this is the other thing too. I like conquered this left side and then gave it to Scrag. So basically Scrag's keeping all this safe for me and I don't have to worry about it. I only have to protect against the north and the east. Um, oh, and the other thing too is uh, this um, this camp here, that's this uh, settlement owned by Hockland, that's coming currently giving me enemy territory, which is giving me extra growth for this Crudenwald um, camp. Um, but the other thing about it is that this camp is raiding this territory so if so eventually i need to take this over because if scrag takes this settlement then he, i'll have a then i'll ha then have a camp in scrag's territory so it'll be raiding his territory so i'm trying to keep my relation as high as i can with scrag so if he takes this settlement i'll be like constantly losing like 10 per turn or whatever from raiding him so you want to so i have to make sure that i get that before i give it to scrag and every time you place a new camp because i you need a new region to put a new camp down because you can't have two camps in one region so every time you you do put a, a camp that's going to be permanent in a region you have to make sure that you're going to take that region and you're not going to let one not going to let any of your allies take it otherwise you're going to need to disband the camp because it's going to eventually ruin your relationship with the ally if they if they take the region where you've got the camp in um so yeah anyway thanks so much guys hope you enjoyed the stream and i hope that little explanation of my camp philosophy was helpful to you guys obviously different situations different terrain different campaign strategies are going to require different camp setups but i just thought my explanation of my thinking with this camp might yeah might be helpful to you guys um 